Hello and welcome back all of you amazing consumers of PAX Day and PAX Day related content. I'm Altari the Professional Gamer and this is another episode of the PAX Friday Review. The show where we talk about all the fun, interesting, new and exciting information that has dropped for PAX Day over the last week. This week we got a bunch of new screenshots confirming in-game assets. A couple of them are hinting towards future gameplay possibilities. We're gonna talk about all of that in a little bit more. And then in addition, there was a very important conversation that started to happen on the PAX Day official Discord with one of the devs. And it's specifically talking about some of the potential rules that are gonna be accompanying the next plot wipe. For most of us, this should have no effect and all of your plots should be more than okay, but make sure you stay tuned throughout the rest of this video just to make sure that at least your bases are covered. Like I said, you probably are going to be okay and Mainframe is going to do a really good job at communicating, hopefully, <laughs> what the next round of plot wipes is going to entail, what plots are going to qualify as wipeable, but we got a couple of hints about what that is going to be this week, so we're going to just talk about it and start the conversation now. So with all of that being said, if you do enjoy this video, please do leave a like. It really helps us as we try to continue to grow this small startup channel. Subscribe so that you can be notified whenever we come out with new PAX Day or PAX Day related content and share with any of your friends who might want to hear this information as well. Another important announcement is that starting this Monday from 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, we are going to be streaming on your favorite streaming platforms of Twitch and YouTube. So be sure to head over to our Twitch channel if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button or follow button or whatever it is over there. Subscribe on YouTube and you'll get the notifications. We're gonna have a fun time. We're, we do anything from building to dungeon runs to PVP and everything in between. I hope to see you there. It's gonna be a blast. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at some screenshots. All right, and here we are looking at some of these new screenshots for this week. And a lot of them are just pictures of raw materials, not new, exactly, but there are a couple of things that I am going to point out. So we do have some sinew and bone here, as well as a couple of various tiers of animal fats. And then it looks like we have some wool product here as well. Now on this particular slide, we do have the blacksmithing crafting components. You can see it right here, but all of these right here are the various sheets. So it looks like we have anything going from the normal iron all the way up to steel here, which is expected. Uh, unfortunately, there doesn't look like there's any higher tiers than steel right now. We know that they've existed in the past. Things like uh, Damascus or high carbon steel were things that existed in previous alphas but uh, not here currently at the very least. Then we have our various arrow tips as well as hinges. These look like just normal ingots. And this was one of the ones that I found a little interesting. This might be hinting towards daggers because you would have daggers, then you would have the swords, and then you'd have like great swords or zweihanders here. So pretty interesting. Another thing that I kind of saw here is like, when can we get these boots mainframe? <laughs> uh, I know that's not what we're talking about here, but you know, also is this a staff, like a walking staff, or is this a spear that a character is placing on the ground? Either way, it would be really cool if we had a static standing pose with a staff or spear like that. We also have some wire here as well. Now, in this particular one, we do have a couple of different wood or carpentry raw materials. I believe here is our pegs, then you have sap wood, then you have heartwood, and then you have uh, planks and fine wood planks maybe, or something like that. Nothing altogether too, too exciting, though we do see the shadow of whatever that character is holding. It looks like it's a spear. 
Then we also have vials for all the different extracts. This is all the different potion making that exists currently. It is cool to see that they're making all of these very unique looking items. So every extract, everything that exists in the game is gonna have a entity that does in fact exist physically and it looks different depending on what is actually comprising it. That I find very, very exciting. Then we have raw glass here and I believe we have had like rough glass and then um, pure glass and I think there might be something in between, but again, that's probably how you're gonna be getting these vials in some way, shape or form too. Then we have leather components and you go anywhere from like rough leather and coarse leather to more fine leather and uh, normal leather and maybe there's some hide. These might be the hides, actually, the animal hides. Then you have your string and your, your belts as well. Now, this was a particularly interesting one. Why, you might be asking, it's because minerals were something that existed previously and they were connected with magic. We have different things from sulfur, to, I don't even know what this is here. There's so many different types of minerals that exist. There was lead, there was mercury, there was just a whole lot of different minerals and you can see a lot of them pictured here. I believe this is hinting towards either a upcoming system like enchantment um, where you utilize these components in order to put magical properties onto weapons or armor. They haven't really explained what enchantment is going to look like, but I do have a feeling that minerals are gonna be connected to that. At one point in time, you needed minerals in order to craft magic in, I think it was Alpha One, that was taken away and in fact i don't even think there's a way to get most minerals in game right now so that means they're not gone permanently they will be making a comeback and they do have assets that just means to me that there's going to be a new system that's tying in all of these really cool looking rocks and that is going to be really awesome now another thing that I would like to say though, is it would be really, really weird if I placed multiple, multiple of these in the same spot. So hopefully there's some like randomization with the models so that there's some uniqueness there. And then we also have health protection and stamina potions of various types. People have gone on and noticed that protection is something that we don't have in game right now from potions, but they were really, really awesome. They would give pretty high protection values across the board for a brief amount of time. So if you're a tank, it would really give you that extra boost that you need while you're going up against elite mobs. Or maybe if you're in a PVP zone, it gives you an upper edge against your opponent where you don't have to worry about having to heal because you're not taking nearly any damage. So that's really cool to hear that that's making a comeback as well. And these various jars and glasses just look really really cool with how they're corked in there looks like these are just little stone pieces that someone's gone in and, and bolted down onto the the jar of glass or potion of whatever type it is so that's really cool then we have the tailor crafting products you have your different linens your strings going from coarse to rough to uh, normal linen string all the way up to fine the different pins and needles looks like silk right here so that's going to be interesting i don't think we've really had silk yet but i guess also what's not shown here is like the different types of products that you can get just from the wool yarn and cotton and all of that i i don't know if that's located here and i don't even know if this is silk it just looks like cocoons to me, so that's what I'm thinking. Let me know if you think that's the same in the comments. And that is all that we have for the screenshots. Now we are going to hop back over and have a quick little discussion about plots, what you need to know in order to keep the ones you have. Like I said at the beginning of the video, I think everyone is going to be okay as long as you're being active on your plots. 
I think ultimately it's going to be a good thing and it's going to open up a lot of spots in the population for current players to actually play the game, though this is going to be a contested issue because again, if you paid for a product, a lot of people feel like they shouldn't lose what they are paying for because that's what they paid for. So let's go ahead and head over and we'll talk about that now. All right, and we are back. So today there was quite a bit of information that was shared on the official Discord. It was brought up, we caught it with our prying eyes and specifically there was a quick little discussion talking about some of the potential rules that are going to exist for the next plot wipe cycle now for anyone who's tuning in what plot wiping is it's different than just wiping the game clean it is there are some plots that exist in different home valleys that are inactive they've been inactive for a while they're not going to get cleaned up because there's nothing incentivizing the players to come back right now. Some of those incentives in the future are going to be you're paying a subscription fee for these various plots. But as it stands, there are a lot of players who actively are not playing the game, but they place their plots. And as a result, new players coming in are unable to find any community because all of the places where there is still community they can't get into because there's a bunch of inactive plots on them. Now, this is going to be kind of a contested subject, so please do be respectful in the comments. But pretty much what it looks like is there's going to be some rules that are going to be applied for this cycle where they're going to be actually looking at like player time. I think there was mention that uh, having a character that has played for more than two hours is going to qualify your plots to not be wiped. Now, this is going to be really, really important if this really is a rule that ends up in the final decision, because that means if you have alternate characters that you're using to hold on to plots and you know place them, you've bought multiple accounts, you probably haven't been playing a lot of time on your alternate character, but you're just using them to hold your plots. That is a problem that Mainframe, I guess, hasn't thought of for this particular aspect. And now that they've kind of already let the cat out of the bag, I don't know how they're going to put it back in. I think there might have been a good opportunity for instead of them just having players circumnavigate getting additional plots, they should have just put like a cap on accounts and allowed them to spend the exact same amount of money to just upgrade their tiers of plots during early access. Maybe doing something like that would work. Maybe that's something that they should consider in the future. I don't know, but that's just my two cents. Either way, um, it does look like there is going to be some kind of activity requirement. Now, something that I think is important is that it should not just be player activity. There's going to be other rules that are applied, and that's very much so what the developers made it appear like in the PAX Day general Discord conversation. There's not a lot of information to go off of, though, and I don't like to speculate on this channel, so I'm not going to go further than that, really. But I think it is important that if you do have a character that is an alternate character that's just holding plots, maybe it's a good opportunity for you to go and gather some flax or some wood or stone on that character for a couple of hours just to ensure that they are at least deemed active. Now, I think that there should probably also be some rules for if there's active building that's been going on onto the plot, then that is something that should warrant the plot still existing. But then again, if we are continuing into the next five months from now and there's still no game wipe where everything on the map gets wiped off and all plots are wiped clean too, I, I don't know if they're going to have to do this in multiple times. And if they do, then what if I've built something up two months ago, how am I going to ensure that 
I don't like, do I have to continue to log in for those things to stay online? That's that. That's why speculation is not a good thing. It'll lead us down rabbit holes that aren't really worth going down because we don't have all the information yet. But I digress. I think it is important that this is something that does happen so that new players can get that fresh experience with an actual community that is active rather than being stuck in kind of these no man lands. But it is also kind of a byproduct of what early access design can do to games sometimes. I believe that early access is really great, especially the way that mainframe is doing it, where they're developing alongside their customers similar to what Ashes of Creation or even Star Citizen is doing, but there is some drawbacks and this is one of them where because the game's not fully released, because there's no subscription fee, they're having to create a system that really exists only for the purposes of early access because in the future they shouldn't be wiping anyone's plots. They should just have a system that's in place to wipe a person's plot out when they stop subscribing to the game or maybe this is a component that's actually going to go in in the future and there's an activity requirement we don't know but either way i feel like it kind of sucks that someone's having to spend some time on this when they could be spending time on other things but it is the unfortunate drawback of early access there's a lot of positives we'll probably talk about that at some point in a video but that's all that we have to talk about for today i hope you enjoyed the video and if you did don't forget to like and subscribe so that you can be notified whenever we come out with new pax day related content share with any of your friends who might be interested if they have those inactive accounts let them know it might be a good idea to log in for at least two hours on that character but there's going to be more rules and mainframe will hopefully communicate this all very very clearly for us I will cover it on this channel as well to make sure that you are all okay as, as best as I can. And with all of that being said, one last reminder, like I said at the start of the video, we are starting a stream on Monday. It'll be the professional stream, 8 to 10 p.m. Pacific Standard Time every Monday from now till forever. And I hope to see you there. But until next time, I'm Altari the Professional Gamer. Mm -hmm.